السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق> الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المكرمين المعظمين ما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا قمتم إلى الصلاة فاغسلوا وجوهكم وأيديكم إلى المرافق وامسحوا برؤوسكم وأرجلكم إلى الكعبين وإن كنتم جنبا فاطهروا صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا ومولانا محمد معدل الجود والكرم وآله الكرام وبه الكريم وبارك وسلم عليك الصلاة والسلام. Respected brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we praise our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, affectionate, kind, merciful. We send peace, salutations, blessings upon our Nabi, last of the messengers, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We send blessings upon our Nabi's entire household, his Ahl al Atahar. We send blessings upon all the companions. We send blessings upon every single one who have died in the state of Iman. On this blessed day of Jumu'ah, in such a beautiful gathering, at such a beautiful place, let's make dua, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us goodness, ease, health, Iman in this dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all the believers, especially the believers in Gaza, in Palestine, in Rafa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect their lives, their homes, their families, their children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them peace, ease, health, long life with Iman, inshallah. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Ameen. Respected brothers and sisters, another khutbah or the topic of Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu. Commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is related to the key of all the ibadat. Today inshallah we will talk about the taharat, cleanliness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us alhamdulillah this beautiful life and he has given us a lot of worships and ibadat that we have to perform. But at the same time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us some rules and regulations that we have to Follow. Today, inshallah, we are going to talk about Surah Al Ma'idah, ayah number 6. It's big ayah, around 9 to 10 line, and it is talking about three major portions of the Taharat. In San, sometime, not sometime, it's actually every single person, sometimes we break our wudu, we go through a hadith asghar, small, minor impurity. So, what do we have to do for that? Sometimes we go through with major impurity, mostly the married couple, and of course those who are balim, they also go through with this thing. Then we have to do taharat, and that is ghusl. And the third portion which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about in this ayah, that is the substitute of ghusl and wudu in the lack of water, when you do not have enough water, or you are so sick that you cannot use water, in those cases you have to do tayammum. So three things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in this ayah. So basically this is the fifth class, inshallah we are going to talk about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, idha qumtum ila salati, faghsilu wujuhakum wa aydiyakum ila al-marafiq, wa msahu bi ruusikum wa arjulakum ila al-ka'bayn. O believers, whenever you get up for salah, <coughs> Whenever you prepare or you plan, you get ready to offer your daily prayers, 
فغسلوا وجوهكم then you have to do wudu and in wudu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned four things it does not mean that we have to do only these four things it means these four things are farz obligatory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but of course if we follow our beloved Nabi Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then the actual wudu has a lot of sunnahs which we have to follow inshallah Four things Allah has mentioned in the Fara'id of Wudu. He says, whenever you get ready for Salah, فَغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ You must wash your face. وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ And you must wash your arms, your hands, including your elbow. وَمْسَحُمْ بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ You should wipe your hands. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ You must wash your feet إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنْ Till ankle. There is the commandment, the first thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in this ayah. <coughs> As I said, these are the fara'id of wudu. First thing we should know, there is a narration of Sayyidina Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. In the <coughs> tafsir of this ayah, he says, Miftahul jannati as-salah. This is the commandment of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith of Rasulullah. Miftahul jannati as-salah. وَمِفْتَاحُ الصَّلَاةِ أَطْهُرُونَ That the kunji, the chabi, the key of salah is, uh, the key of jannat is salah. And the key of salah is wudu, is taharat. If we want to get into jannat, we have to offer our daily prayers. And if we want, our daily prayers should be valid and, uh, you know, accepted in the sight in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to make sure that we are completely, absolutely clean. And when I say clean, it is not only about wudu. We have to make sure that the clothes we are wearing, that is clean. The body we have, that is clean. And the place we are going to perform our salah, that is clean. So we have to make sure that these three things, body, clothes, and the place, these three things should be absolutely clean. But that inshallah rahman, we can start our salah otherwise we uh, forget about you know being valid forget about being accepted it will not even start that is why this is called shara'it of the wudu shara'it of the salah shara'it means conditions we have to observe before salah few things are obligatory during salah like uh, reading surah al-fatiha reading another surah performing ruku and sujood and tashawud these are during the salah Few things we have to observe before saying Allahu Akbar, and one is uh, one of the uh, those things is that uh, wudu, having a proper wudu or the ghusl, which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has mentioned over here. He has mentioned four fara'id, and according to all Imam Mustadid, these are the four fara'id. But we all know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has sent our beloved Nabi Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with all the information, guidance. And uh, uh, as a teacher, Allah says, كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْكُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلِيكُمْ آيَاتِنَا وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَقُونُ تَعْلَمُونَ That's how we send prophets and messengers that he comes to you and he teaches you, he does tazkiyah, he cleans your heart. He cleans your heart, he purifies your heart. So he works on your ruh first. Then, he teaches you the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the basic and fundamental thing. <coughs> then, it, then he teaches you wisdom, <coughs> the kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the wisdom. And then he teaches you every single thing which you do not know. And we see that, that in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the era of Sahaba, Sahaba al-Kiram used to ask every single question to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned several times with a lot of elaboration. We have a lot of things. But at the same time, there are so many things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has slightly touched the topic and did not mention anything. And salah is one of them. Allah says, wa aqimu salah, offer your daily prayers. He says, "Inna salat kanat ala al-mu'minin kitaban maqouta." Indeed, five. Uh, indeed, prayers are being obligatory on you upon a particular time. This is what Allah has said. But when you have to pray fajr, when you have to pray dhuhr, when you have to pray asr, when you have to pray isha, it's not mentioned. 
How many rakat Fajr has, Dhuhr has, Maghrib, Isha, not mentioned. Or how you have to do Takbir al Takhlima, Qiyam, Qirat, Ruku, not mentioned. For that you have to go to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Ma atakum al Rasulu, fakhudu, wa ma nahakum anu fanta. Whatever Rasulullah teaches you, take it. Whatever he is you stopping you from, leave it. And that is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he brought a guidance for every single thing. You know, some of the disbelievers, they used to make fun of Sahaba. That like, your Nabi teaches you everything. Does he tell you how to urinate? Sahaba says, yes, we have the Messiah of Vistinda as well. How to urinate, how to clean, all those things. They were making fun. Like, do you, you are telling that every single thing he is teaching you? Sahaba says, yes, of course. This is our Nabi Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He teaches us every single thing, even how to use the restroom. Alhamdulillah, we are being taught. Alhamdulillah, this is Deen. So wudu is one of them, basic and fundamental thing. So four faraid, Allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned. But if we want to get more detail, that what kind of actual wudu we should have, for that we have to go to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. <coughs> I'm going to quote two ahadith. And you will get to know these ahadiths are not ordinary, very, very important thing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, <coughs> with motivation, not only just a method of wudu, it has beautiful thing, narration in Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when a person, he makes wudu, <coughs> and good wudu, fa ahsan al wudu, man tawadda'a fa ahsan al wudu. خَرَجَتْ خَطَايَهُ مِنْ جَسَدِهِ حَتَّى تَخْرُدَ مِنْ تَحْتِ أَظْفَارِينَ When a person he makes very good wudu with all the sunnahs, you know, observing all the sunnahs and avoiding all the makruhat and every single thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases his sins from his body. Even sins which are hiding underneath his nails, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take away those sins as well, alhamdulillah. In another narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, with elaboration, in Malik and Nisa in Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, narration of Sayyidina Abdullah, he says, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when a person he makes uh, wudu and he starts with his hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases all of the sins from his hand. When he goggles his mouth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases his sins which are committed by his mouth. When he pour water in his nose and sniff it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases his sins if they are hiding over there. When he washes his face, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases his sins from his face. When he washes arms, including elbow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only cleaning him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wiping out his sins as well from his hand. When he does the masa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases his sins from his head. When he washes feet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases his sins from his feet. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been over Nabi Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, including sins underneath his nails. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases those things. And when he goes to the masjid and he prays, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases his darajah, his status, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gets closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Just imagine. I guess all of us, everybody, we make wudu every single day. Right? All of us for every single prayer. And if not, then we have to make sure that we start our prayers on time and make wudu on time, inshallah. When we do that, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, we are wiping out our sins every single day. Every single day. Look at the opportunity we are getting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us good Muslims inshallah. Amen. Only problem is that what we do, that we put more major sins on top of all these things. Allah erases our minor sins. And he says that a person when he prays, a, you know, salah, like all five daily prayers, and Jumu'ah, and reading. So what happened? <coughs> his sins between one Ramadan to another Ramadan, between one Jumu'ah to another Jumu'ah, and between one Salah to another Salah. As long as he is not committing any major sins, 
all of his sins will be forgiven. But the problem is, we do not deal in minor sins. We are always committing major ones. Because we deal in big things, right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Our eyes are committing major sins. Tongue, always, you know, backbiting, paper, lying, betraying, all those things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us, inshallah. Wudu and cleanliness is so beautiful. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna ummati yad'oona yawm al-qiyamati ghuzzan muhajjadina min athari al-wudu'i. On the day of judgment, you all know, we will have thousands of ummahs over there. This is in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ummah of Sayyidina Adam, Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Musa, Sayyidina Isa. And all the prophets and messengers, they will have their ummahs. <coughs> and among them, we will be there too. How the ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be recognized in that huge crowd. Rasulullah says, on the day of judgment, my ummah will be called and my ummah will be recognized with the light on their forehead because of their wudu. The nur they will have on their uh, forehead, on their face. Inshallah, with that, <coughs> they will be recognized in those million and billion and trillion people, Inshallah. So anybody who wants, that he should be recognized on the day of judgment. And anybody who wants that his forehead should be shining and you know rising like star, then what he should be doing? He should make him, he should be making wudu, inshaAllah Rahman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us good Muslim, inshaAllah. There are so many hadith in front of me which are talking about the importance of wudu, but we are all doing it. So I am not going to talk about those hadiths. You better know it. How to make a proper wudu. Do it and teach your children as well. And especially I do see, in summer I don't, but in winter, I see that people, they do masah on the shoes. So I must tell you, you should know all the masail of masail al khufain <coughs> The khuf, khuf means the socks that we are doing masah on. There are two major mistakes I, I see. First, that people do masah on regular socks. And socks like ankle socks, absolutely not allowed. And it does not, you know, uh, validate your wudu. Absolutely not. It has to be covering your, you know, half of your feet, uh, um, uh, way, you know, upper, uh, you know, the little lower than your, you know, knee. It, it should not be ankle socks. The second thing, it should be very thick. It should not be that, you know, summer socks that you are just wiping out and suddenly you feel the, you know, uh, the water on your feet. Those uh, socks are not acceptable. Second, uh, you know, major thing I see that people do masa on the lower portion of your feet because they think we are walking. So this is the portion which is actually getting dirty, but actually masa is not here. It is here on your feet. It is not lower. It is the upper portion. Uh, I do see in the Vudu area many people do that. So please correct yourself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our ibadah and worship, inshaAllah. It is ease, alhamdulillah. We are Muslim and we are Ummah Muhammadiyah. We have plenty of ease. We have ease in every occasion. If it is winter, we have ease, alhamdulillah, in that too. <coughs> if we are in summer, we have ease in that too, alhamdulillah, in all the occasions. The second thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. So the first one was, if your wudu is broken, that means if you have used the restroom, then you have to do wudu. Second thing Allah has mentioned in this ayah, Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 6. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ جُنُبًا فَطَّهَّرُوا And if you are junubi, junubi means if ghusl is obligatory upon you. And that happens if husband and wife had a relationship or if they had a wet dream, any of them or any balif, even if he is not married or she is not married, they had a wet dream. So any kind of thing which make a ghusl obligatory, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَطَّهَّرُوا Then we have to do ghusl. The ghusl is very simple. And three things are the fara'il of ghusl. The first one, gargle your mouth properly. When I say properly, it should not be looking down and drinking like taking water and taking it out. No, we have to take water and lift your head up. 
and do gargles properly. So it should go everywhere unless you are fasting. During the month of Ramadan, if we are doing any kind of ghusl, whether if it is ghusl janabat or ghusl tarat, anything, in that case, uh, we should not gargle uh, deep because that can uh, break our fast. The second thing, we have to properly clean our nose. Put water from right hand, from the last finger, or you know, you should clean your nose. And then pour water on every single portion of your body. Whether they are open easily, or whether they are, you know, like your underarms and, you know, skin, if it is, you know, covering anything. Make sure we pour our water every single place. Do that, inshallah, then our ghusl will be counted. If my sisters are li listening, they have to make sure if they are wearing any jewelry and the jewelry is old, you know. So several of them, what happened? That jewelry is being worn like for a very long time. So water does not pass. Make sure they clean it. They, you know, they, if it's uh, the ring or any kind of ring, it's very tight. So make sure that you remove it or you know you take care of it. Inshallah, then ghusl will be counted. In that case, I'm going to mention few things. This is the human nature and human need. We become you know impure, especially in the major impurity. But what do we have to do? I've heard. A brother, he was asking me this question, and he was, uh, you know, when I heard it, it was like, uh, I was so shocked. He says, uh, sometime I get close to my wife, and the next morning is very cold, so I do not take shower. And then after, let's say, when Juma comes, then I take shower. So do I get sin? I said, let's say you are close to your wife on Saturday, you are missing six days Fajr, Zuhar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. And every single moment, it's going in impurity. How can you think it, the guna and the sin start immediately when Fajr passes? Immediately when Fajr passes. Sahaba Giram, the Nallah, the Nallah, the Nallah, the asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> Sometimes we get close to our wife in the middle of the night. So we have to do ghusl immediately. Rasulullah says, not immediately, but the first thing in the morning before Fajr, you have to do that, you clean it. But it is always good to wash your private parts. That immediately, at least that kind of ghusl, not exact ghusl, but you go in the bathroom and wash your private parts. So what will happen? That at least, you know, the impurity will go away. And in the narration of Rasulullah mentioned in Nisai, the house which has picture, printed picture, and the house which has the dog, and the house where the junubi, the person who is napak, a major impure, malaika, farishte, angels, they don't enter in that house. So if we want, our house should be protected from all kind of bad things. This is something that we have to make sure that uh, we clean it immediately. If our bed sheet is actually dirty, we clean that immediately. We should not you know, keep these things. There's another reason that we have to observe. You know, many jinns and shayateen, they always want to attack on insan or human being. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us one angel to protect us from jinns and shayateen. But when we are impure for longer period of time, you know what happens? That angel goes away. He does not want to be with us. Then the jinns and shayateen, they are able to attack on you. <coughs> and then you are going to go to any barber and spend a lot of money and you will not get any kind of fire at all. Because they are dhongis. What is the best thing? Offer your prayers on time. Be with taharat, inshallah, nothing can harm you. Then you say, bana illa ma katab Allah No any musibat will, uh, will touch you, inshallah. One last thing about this, then inshallah, the third thing we are going to talk about. Many people, they think that when they get impure with major, major impurity, like let's say they had relationship with their wife or they had wet dream, now their entire body is absolutely nudges. So some people, they do not even eat food. Some people, they do not even touch many things. And this is what, and even many women, when they are going through their menses, they also think that. It is not like that. Mu'min is always pure from his heart, from his root, from his soul. In, in, we are not nudges. But yes, of course, some impurity has occurred. <coughs> so we can do whatever we 
we want besides the few things like not praying not, not praying not we cannot pray we cannot read quran not even uh, you know uh, without looking we cannot perform hajj or tawaf that we have to make sure that we uh, get uh, you know part from that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says narration of sayyida aisha idha kana junuban fa arada an ya'kula aw yanama tawadda abudu aw lisala if you are junubi and you want that you want to do your regular thing just think i just wudu even still ghusl is farz upon you and do whatever you want you can sleep you can eat you can do alhamdulillah we have guidance for every single thing one last thing the substitute of wudu and ghusl is tayammum allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa man kana min wa in kana mariban aw ala safar أو جاء أحد منكم من الغائط أو لا مستم النساء فلم تجدوا ما فتيمموا صعيدا طيبا فامسحوا بوجوهكم وأيديكم منه. If you have to make wudu or if you have to make ghusl, ghusl is obligatory or wudu is obligatory, but you do not have water access to water. In that case, or you are very sick. that if you touch the water doctor has said you cannot touch water in those cases you do tayammum tayammum means you take your hands put any dusty place where there is a dust special good to uh, put, uh, you know place your hands on the floor on the you know the ground outside anywhere where there is the dirt or dust place your hand and do masakh three times of your face 1 2 3 then you wipe it out if it is excess Then take another time, right hand, and then left. Uh, I mean, uh, right hand and then the left hand three times, and that's it. No any other massage of the head, no feet, nothing. This thing will be equal to wudu and ghusl. Alhamdulillah. And then again, Allah says, "Ma yuridu Allah liyadala alaykum min haraj." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not want to give you any kind of hardship. He wants to make things easier for you. Yuridu Allah. بكم اليسرى ولا يريد بكم العسر <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give us easy does not want to give us any kind of hardship may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq that we learn the masail of deen why i'm just skipping the tayammum masail usually in these days we do not want that like we do not uh, come in the situation where we have to do you know tayammum i did i guess twice in my life and uh, many of us maybe did not even go because water is always there so close to you even if you have to buy it buy it and make wudu may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us good muslims practicing muslims inshallah act upon deen and uh, sharia inshallah amin ya rabbal alamin